Hi, it's Cheryl from Caribou Country Lifestyle. I was out here weeding in my garden and I have these onions that I left in the garden from last year. These are my annual bunching, the hardy annual bunching onions. And I left them in over the winter and they flowered. So you'll see these dried up little puffs, flower puff balls. Well, inside them is the seeds. And this is how I'm going to save the seeds and then have my own seeds for next year to plant more annual bunching onions. Now I have to be very careful when I'm doing this, so I'm just going to put this bag underneath here and I'm just going to cut the top so that that goes in there and then that way I will lose less seeds this way and I've got quite a few seed heads I've noticed I have some seeds that have dropped onto this uh, frame of my raised bed so I'm just going to get these ones that haven't I'm just going to put it right underneath it and then snip it oh I didn't snip it and the seeds are like dropping in there like you could you barely even have to touch them so I'm going to put this right under it and I'll cut it from the top this time there that worked better I'm in the garden doing this we're actually processing our pigs and uh, we're dispatching them and then we're going to take them to the butchers and then they will uh, do all the cuts. So we have four pigs. Oh, this one's not going to cooperate. I'm just going to bend it into the bag. And then that way when I cut it, ah, I lost the bag. Cut it. There we go. Okay, I've got three more. So let's get in here. And I'm gonna cut it and throw it in there. A little tighter spot. Try not to disturb it too much. Maybe I'll just cut it. Lost a few seeds. So next year in this spot, we will be having from all the seeds that dropped down in here. Now I have a few more here along the sides that have fallen over. I'll just cut them off and throw these seed heads into the bag as well and then what I'm gonna do is I will lay these seed heads out onto one of my uh, kitchen flower towels and then they can finish drying out more and anything that if there's any seeds, it'll just fall right out onto the towel. So, yeah. Look, I have all these seeds in the bottom of this bag and they're just clung to the side of this. I'm just gonna kind of push these seeds that have fallen onto the side here. I'll throw these ones, kind of roll them into my bag as well. Cause there's a, probably about a dozen seeds that have fallen from these flower heads and uh, yeah, this is the first time I've ever collected uh, onion seeds so that's pretty awesome. I'll just ziplock this up so I don't lose any getting them from here to the house and I'll continue on with my uh, weeding. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that it's really easy. Oh, there's another seed head. I just missed one. There's one in behind here, right up against the side of this tomato. I just have to cut it and drop it in. Let's take a look. Anyways, okay, that's it. I just want to show you what I've done here. I've laid it all out onto one of those cotton flower towels. And these are all the seed heads from my hardy annual bunching onions. 
and I'm just going to have these lay out, let them dry out, and then once they're all dried, I will bag them up into a little Ziploc bag. And that will probably give me enough seeds for a few years. So this is the second time that I've saved seeds. Last year I saved my Chinese Toy Choy seeds and I ended up getting quite a few seeds. I probably had almost a thousand seeds and I've actually did my fifth succession sewing with the Chinese Toy Choy again. So that's great. And I actually just sewed my radishes for the third time as well. They don't, those are just seeds that don't take very long to mature and to be able to pick. And uh, just pretty much tying up some loose ends before I leave for Saskatchewan. I, um, we dispatched our pigs yesterday and, and so I have taken the heart and the liver from the pigs and I've sliced it up and I'm dehydrating that in my dehydrator. Another thing I've done is the plums that I picked from that plum tree that we just found out we have. I ended up, we ate quite a few, I gave quite a few away, and I ended up canning them in uh, just a light syrup where you have like about five cups of water, two and a half cups of sugar, and then you just let that simmer on your stove and keep it warm until you're ready to actually use it to can the plums. So I ended up, I got 10 pints of the canned plums and I also um, canned some antipasta. I've been wanting to can that. It's um, kind of an expensive thing to make and it takes a few hours to for all the chopping that you have to do for antipasta, but it's made. I probably only make it every couple of years, like every two or three years I make it. When I make a batch, it makes about 15 pints. Um, so I'll have enough. I give some of it away at Christmas time and uh, my kids really enjoy it too. And they eat quite a bit of it on crackers. So it's um, something really nice that I know a lot of people that really enjoy that type of stuff too. So I just wanted to bring you along, show you what I've done with these seeds. Um, I did have a video last year about how I had saved the seeds from my Chinese Toy Choy as well. And that worked out really, really well. I got plenty of seeds and I'll probably have enough of those seeds for the next couple of years too. So I want to save a few more seeds, wouldn't mind trying a few other things. And uh, it's just kind of interesting to see what you can save and what you can't. I've never saved seeds before last year and uh, it's uh, pretty cool actually so thanks for joining me and we will see you again the next time bye for now